Well, my Dreamcast finally died. Rest in peace, sweet system. You went out the way you lived, playing wrestling video games. And speaking of broken beyond repair, TNA! Okay, that was mean. But with all the speculation on TNA's future, it seems a good time to check out their main contribution to the video game world. They put out a lot of wacky apps and one game for the PSP and DS, but their sole console outing was 2008's TNA Impact for the PS3, PS2, Wii, and Xbox 360, which I'm playing for this review. I don't know if people were excited when this game was announced, but I think everyone hoped it would be good since we were only getting WWE video games at that point. Plus, with a TNA video game, you can take out the nonsensical booking and replace it, well, well, more nonsensical booking. More on that in a sec. One of the main allures of a TNA game is a chance to play as a whole new roster. And that's true to a point. You can divide the roster into two segments. The first, guys who made their name in other companies and ended up in TNA, and thus have been in plenty of other video games. Guys like Kurt Angle, Sting, Scott Steiner, Kevin Nash, and Christian. By the way, it's jarring to see Christian in a TNA game. I know he was with the company for like three years, but still, weird. The other segment would be the more TNA homegrown talent. Guys like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Homicide, and the Mercy Machine Guns. Wrestlers who have had little, if any, video game presence. Which gives Impact some added novelty. What I don't like is the fact that a lot of the roster needs to be unlocked at the start. You start with 17 wrestlers, and unlock another 9 by going through the story mode. I don't mind a few unlockables, but have them be wacky characters like Surge, or Cheeks, or Stamper. When you cut the roster by almost a third at the start, it's no fun. And I know WWE 2K14 had a bunch of unlockables, but they were all the older wrestlers, and the entire current roster is at your disposal immediately. Oh, and Devon is available from the start, but you have to unlock Bully Ray. Good job. Surprisingly, there are no knockouts. Normally, I don't care about women wrestlers in my video games, but the knockouts at the time were the most popular and acclaimed part of TNA, so it's weird they have zero representation. Ah, the difficulty levels are backyard, indie, and pro. Which one does TNA fall in? The game does in fact feature the six-sided ring, and it actually works fine. I never had a problem throwing a guy into the ropes or climbing on the top turnbuckle, but it would have been nice if they included the option for a four-sided ring. Match types are pretty limited. You have the standard singles and tags, plus submissions, handicap, and false count anywhere. False count anywhere is really lame, since you can't even go backstage. You can just pin someone on the floor around the ring. I mean, the impact zone is in a theme park. Why not brawl on a roller coaster or something? What are missing are several TNA staples. There's no cage match, which is weird since one of their bigger pay-per-views was based on just cage matches. No Full Metal Mayhem, Lethal Lockdown, or King of the Mountain match, which is TNA's reverse ladder match deal, which would have been some chaotic fun with multiple players. Not even a Monster's Ball match, but considering the only weapon in the game is a chair, I guess that wouldn't work so well. What is here, however, is the Ultimate X match, which you can have with two or three wrestlers. It basically plays in the game as it does in real life. You climb the ropes from the turnbuckles, shimmy down to the belt, at which point it kicks off a minigame. We have to press A at the right moment three straight times to get the belt. This is exceedingly difficult to do, especially since the computer is often hot on your trail, and you'll likely be kicked off the ropes and plummeted to the canvas before too long, but still, a fun and different game mode. You can only play in the old impact zone in Orlando to start, and a bunch of other areas being unlockable. I was hoping they would be almost empty high school gym and almost empty baseball stadium, but it's just arenas in Vegas, England, Mexico, and Japan. I'm probably being mean again. You think they have different pay-per-view set designs, but since they all took place in the same building, I suppose there's not much point. The loading screen is noted video game expert Christy Hemme giving you tips. Huh, that just might work. I actually really like the graphics. I think they look pretty good for 2008. The only thing is, is it me or is the canvas look filthy? As in, recovering from a staph infection should be one of the achievements. Mike today and, oh yeah, Don West handle commentary duties. And if announcer commentary in games isn't great today, it sure wasn't in 2008. Oh, right in the family jewels. Nobody likes to see that. Oh, man, right in the stones. 
before the game came out, we heard that guys like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe were giving input, and they were going to make it play like the beloved N64 wrestling games. Hey, guess what? That didn't happen. Why do you even invite those kind of comparisons? Well, that being said, the controls aren't bad. A is kick, X is punch, Y is a grapple, and you can modify the strength of all those by hitting the LB button, which is a little awkward, but manageable. And if you string together offense, you can fill your impact meter and hit a finisher, most of which are captured faithfully. The game also rewards you with style points for hitting certain moves, which you can use to unlock moves, wrestlers, and arenas. But the gameplay has some big flaws. First, the AI can be extremely cheap on reversals, especially on the harder difficulty settings. But even on the easier settings, it was a problem. It also favors mini games for scenarios like getting out of submissions, meaning you have to hit a certain button sequence to get out of moves faster, which just never feels natural. Mashing buttons to get out of pins or submissions may seem antiquated, but the franticness of it really captures the dire straits you're in better than hitting X, A, and B. Beyond that, move sets are extremely limited, so matches feel repetitive, and you have Kurt Angle without an ankle lock and Sting without a scorpion death lock, which is inexcusable. I didn't delve too much into the creator wrestler, but it didn't look terribly deep. Plus, only have five slots to work with, and seemingly everything is locked when you start. All right, I guess we have to discuss story mode. Remember Suicide, the body-suited, masked X-Division guy who showed up in late 2008? Well, the character actually originated in the Impact game. And TNA introduced an actual wrestler as a way of cross-promotion. And yes, they thought the name Suicide was a good idea. I just imagine some kid renting the game and having to ask his parents what Suicide meant. The Suicide character has been portrayed by Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, Akira Raijin, TJ Perkins, and Austin Aries, albeit for one day. Raijin wrestles today as Sushi, which is amazingly a step up from his TNA gimmick. In fact, Perkins still portrays the character to this day, although he's been renamed Manic, since it took someone six years to realize Suicide was a dumb name. Anyway, start the story mode, you are Suicide. Via voiceover, we learn Suicide is rising through the ranks of TNA, so whoever is under the mask must have previously been in the WWE. You're going to get the big title shot, but you run a follow of LAX backstage, who advise you to take a dive. You choose not to listen and win the belt, and get your ass beat outside the arena. In fact, you get pummeled so badly, your carcass is dumped in Mexico, and you have to have your face put back together by these bickering plastic surgeons, who make you look like your creator wrestler. Also, you have amnesia. This is all true. Look, I applaud forward thinking in video games, but even Vince Russo thinks his story is too crazy. You have the urge to slam people to a map, so you start wrestling in Mexico against made-up wrestlers. I'm presuming it's for TNA, since you're still in a six-sided ring. If you win this gauntlet match, you get sent to a military base in the U.S. for an international match. Huh? Anyway, you're smuggled into the U.S. in a truck, and you have to fight this juggalo in an army base. Then James Storms is there and challenges you to a foot-and-door match, where if you win, you get an audition. That audition is another gauntlet match against Scrubs, where Jay Lethal is the last guy. When that, your new BFF Kevin Nash tells you you can sleep on a cot in the dressing room. You get attacked by a random guy and team up with Eric Young for a while, and things go from there. I, to- I totally have this covered, man. I- I'm-, I'm a pro at this stuff. Oh, really? You bet. Two years of drama club. What? Well, uh, I, I just set up the stage, but that Ms. McKinley, she said I always had a lot of potential. You gotta be like a sponge, man. Absorb it. Just take it in. Trust me, man. Just sit back and look all scary. Huh? Oh. Okay, guys, let's set up here. Start the shot with me in the frame and then pull out to show all three of us. Welcome back, fans. Getting ready for the match soon, we have the heavy underdogs, the uh, salty biscuits. So, guys, anything you want to get off your chest before your upcoming match? Chest. She, she just, she just talking about her chest. Don't worry about the name, Christy. We'll let our actions in the ring speak for themselves. Uh, can you keep them away? Uh, are you wearing, are you wearing my perfume? I, uh, um, uh, uh, uh. I, I, I love you. Oh, creepy. I'm sorry. That's sorry. it. This interview is over. No, no. Ah! Ow! Go, hey, call me. Call me. Dude, you think you like that? Yeah, I'm very slick. In the end, Jeff Jarrett is the final boss because, of course, he is. 
Impact isn't great, but it's not unplayable by any means. I think the biggest shame is there's never any sequels. There was definite room for improvement, and, well, who wouldn't like a game with a full roster, a bevy of TNA-specific stipulations, and a story mode concocted by a sane person? Sadly, they were one and done for console games, which is too bad, since more wrestling games on the market's better for everyone. The game is worth it as a curiosity, but I wouldn't break the bank for it. It really stands as an example of wasted potential. Kind of like, well, TNA itself. Anyway, thanks for watching, and remember, a winner is you.